Welcome to Watch Chat, where we chat about watches and other facts of life. One should not buy this watch for the wrong reason. This is the Brightling Premier B25 Datora 42. It is the most refined Brightling chronograph with a complete calendar and moon face. I know what you're gonna say. Is this a homage of the Patek Philippe reference 5270? Well, the short answer to that question is no. In fact, there is no need for it to be. More about that later. In this video, we're going to talk about the introduction of the Premier collection, the rudimentary details of the watch, why you should not get this watch, and how to use this watch. Let's first talk about its heritage. The Premier Collection was first launched in year 1943, paying homage to the three generations of inventors in Breitling, Leon, Gaston, and Willy Breitling. The Premier Collection was meant to showcase Breitling's highest level of watchmaking and to position at the forefront of watchmaking elegance, but still with versatility and sportiness that distinguishes itself from all other Breitling wristwatches. About 8 decades later, we now have the latest generation of Premier chronographs that brings its timeless elegance back to life. So, what does this elegance entail? The watch is measured at 42mm in diameter, 15mm from lug to lug and 15.3mm in thickness. Don't let those numbers fool you. Whilst on paper, this feels like a chunky watch. On the wrist, it doesn't feel that way. And that's because of the proportions and some intelligent design it has. To start off, it's that stainless steel case it has that sandwiched between the dome-shaped sapphire crystal with AR coating and the concave sapphire crystal cover at the bottom of the case. So, when one takes a glance of the side of the watch, you won't really notice how thick it is because of the transparent material used. All you will notice is probably the stainless steel case that is brush finished on the side with a three-line design that helps give an illusion that it is slimmer. The bevel on the lugs, the front of the lugs, and the space between the 22mm lug width are all polished finish. The brown bolster thick polish alligator strap has matching color stitching. On the reverse side of the strap, you have Brightling's bright signature yellow calfskin leather which also has matching stitching. I really do like the contrasting loud yellow as it gives a sporty vibe to the watch albeit it wears with an alligator strap. The strap tapers down to 18mm. The very sporty yet elegant stainless steel folding claps buckle here is brush finish, with Breitling's name and logo engraved on it, whereas the bevel and twin pushes are all polished finish. The B25 caliber automatic movement here, although machine finish, is still refinedly done. It is based on the Concepto 2000 RAC2822 movement. It has 32 joules, 28,800 VPH, hacking seconds function, it uses a vertical clutch layout with a column view chronograph, 48 hours of power reserve and it is cost certified. The watch features a huge crown here that is not screwed down. However, it does have a 100 meter of water resistance. It is also signed with the B logo on it. It also features the rectangular chronograph pushes that are polished, making it look very sleek. The very thin bezel is also polished. The dial is said to be copper, but many would agree that it's geared more towards salmon or a pink dial. Brightling chronographs are known for their busy dial, and this is no exception. The subdial at the 9 o'clock features the running seconds, with the entire 60 seconds marker painted on giving you a more accurate reading of the seconds. The subdial at the 3 o'clock showcased a 30 minute chronograph timer. The extended 3, 6 and 9 minute markers is a throwback to how chronographs were used in the 1940s to time how long distance phone calls are built. The 6 o'clock counter here has a dual function. It displays a coaxial date and a moon face which literally has a face of the moon. The moon is also polished with white and yellow stars on the blue night sky. Yellow stars? Hmm. 
Both the left and right counter have a step down with a circular motion on it. The bottom counter has a double step down with a circular pattern as well. The two cutout window at the 12 o'clock unveiled the day and month in a white layout with black wordings. I really like how the design on the aperture is chamfered like a picture frame. All the printing on the subdials, the brand name, 1884, the word Datora, the word Swiss made, the minute track and tachymeter on the chapter ring are all in a very dark tone of blue. The chrono seconds hand and all the hands in the subdial are all polished in blue needle shape. The hour and minute polish hands are shrinked like design and get this, they both have loom on them. The Polish Brightling logo and the numeral indices are all applied. To me, the broken numerals due to the subdial cutout are really cool. It just shows how much of work and attention to details Brightling has put into this watch. As much as this watch looks like the 5270, I do not think that one should buy the Datura because it looks like a Patek Philippe. Yes, buying a less expensive watch hoping to ride on the fame and glamour of a more expensive one is a wrong reason. As much as I like the 5270 and think that it is a more superior watch, there are areas where I think the Datora trumps over the 5270 and am of the view that they are two very different watch. If you want the Datora, get it because it is the sportier dress watch that has all the right proportions. Get it because you think that the step-down circular pattern subdials provides better definition, readability, and a cleaner design on the dial. Get it because you prefer how all the hands align with the center of the watch giving it a more symmetrical view. You should get it because you find the applied polish numerals and the font type used provides a more heritage and yet modern luxurious look. Get it because you like the loom that provides better readability at night. Last but not least, you should get it because you like what the brand represents, its heritage and how the brand is not trying to be something that it's not. Notwithstanding the pros and the excellent execution and finishing of this watch, it has its flaws as well. The obvious one is of course its thickness. Visually, it may not look thick but you will have difficulty fitting it in that type sleeves. However, if you don't mind protruding it, it is an awesome piece to showcase. Although it is thick, the head only weighs 88.5 grams. The entire watch weighs 110 grams. Because of the wider head spin, i.e. 42mm, it still feels pretty balanced on the wrist. The other shortfall this watch has is that it's not a perpetual annual calendar. Come February 28, all the months you have only 30 days, you will have to manually adjust the date on the following day. When you have a watch that requires you to adjust the date, day, month, and moon phase, there is quite a lot that needs to be done. So, how do you adjust this watch? The crown allows you to pull it to two positions. Position 1 allows you to instantaneously adjust the date when you rotate it anti-clockwise. With every full rotation on the date, this will then change the month. However, the month changes slowly with a snap with the date hitting the first. To change the day, you will need to hit that pusher on the left. Thankfully, Brightling provides a golden pusher to help you with setting the day. Of course, you can use other stuff as long as you don't scratch that beautiful case. To adjust the moon face, you rotate the crown clockwise. Sounds like a lot of work, doesn't it? Fear not! In position 2, when adjusting the time with the minute hand, the date, day, and moon phase changes with a snap at the stroke of midnight. The chronograph pusher is buttery smooth to press. However, the reset pusher is a little stiff and it's not a flyback chronograph. Be that as it may, this did not deter me from getting it. Here's a bonus segment. After owning this watch for several months, I can truly understand why the Datora 42 Salmon is regarded as one of the most handsome looking watch. I mean, look at it. Just look at it. 
The proportions on the subdials compared to the 42mm dimension is just perfect. You need the subdials to be large enough to be legible, especially when you have date display like this, and yet ensure that the subdials are not too polarizing to the extent that it dominates the dial. The enlarged polished numerals really gives it a lot of character, coupled with the polished hands and moon face here that gives it a lot of blink. Oh, here's a fun fact. Every time you read the time, whenever the moon face appears, you will see your face reflecting on the moon like a mirror. Lastly, like my Omega Seamaster Aquaterra World Timer, this watch looks more expensive than it is. If you've missed my review video on the Aquaterra World Timer, I'll put a link in the description below. Anyway, those are just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this kind of video, do like, share, subscribe and hit that notification icon to support me and I'll really appreciate it and promise to make more videos like this. Until the next one, thank you for watching.